enough with the preamble, let's get on to the talks. We're going to hear from our first speaker, um, who's going to be joining us from Nudie Jeans. Uh, his name is Corey Page Spencer. Corey is the chief executive of North America for Nudie, uh, the denim company that's known for its embrace of sustainable uh, consumption patterns and reuse in a really interesting um, and innovative way. The Nudie Jeans brand has served as a conductive thread through Corey's career from the sales floor at Bloomingda Bloomingdale's on 59th Street to the iconic men's store atrium to Want Agency, uh, which some of you in Montreal might be familiar with. Uh, they had launched Nudie Jeans in North America just before him joining. And he spent the last two years at the helm of Nudie Jeans Inc., the North American subsidiary, uh, where he oversees the retail and wholesale divisions. Please welcome our first speaker for the night, Corey Page Spencer. Howdy, y'all. What's going on? I uh, hope I can work this right. Um, so full disclosure, uh, we have a director of sustainability. She's amazing, but uh, she couldn't be here, and also she thinks traveling is uh, not sustainable. So she asked me if I would fly from New York to here. So uh, unfortunately, you get to hear from a business guy, but uh, I'm also passionate about sustainability. I got to pick her brain before this. So if I lie to you, uh, I won't lie to you, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give you as much accurate information as possible. Anything I don't know, I'll reference to send you. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Nudie Jeans. Uh, this picture is a picture of Sweden 1950s, and this is still our brand image that uh, appears on all of our tagging. And uh, what you can, maybe you can guess what the thread is here but every single person in this picture is wearing something indigo dyed, actually. Uh, this little boy over here has become a, a mainstay in our logo effects right now. But this was picked out by our founder, uh, so I'll jump into the company. Our founder was Maria. Uh, she worked in a vintage store and where she found this picture. She also was the designer for Lee Europe, uh, and she left for sustainability reasons, which I'll talk about maybe a little bit later. We were founded in 2001 in Gothenburg, Sweden. It's the second largest city in Sweden. Uh, it's on the west coast of Sweden, very different from our west coast, I can tell you. Um, we are independent and privately owned still by Maria Joachim and Pale. This is extremely important from a sustainability perspective because it allows us for some major agility, which isn't necessarily conducive to an amazing bottom line, which we can talk about more later as well. Our head office is in Gothenburg. We have 70-ish employees. We have more than that right now. Uh, and it covers all aspects of the business from design to distribution to wholesale to accounting. Uh, we're available in what we call our repair shops. We have more than 31. I think we have closer to 40 now across the world. Uh, our repair shops are our retail shops. I'll go, in more, uh, I'll go into more detail on that a little bit later as well. We have our own online shop, and we sell to about 1,500 multi-brand retailers worldwide. And for a long time, we were known as the, oops, sorry, a long time we were known as the, uh, the denim company that was 100% organic, uh, used 100% organic cotton. Uh, that went 100% in 2012, but I remember in 2006 when we set this goal internally, it was a crazy goal, because no one even cared about organic, no one even knew organic denim existed. Uh, people weren't even talking about organic chicken. So when we were talking about organic denim, people were like, you're gonna eat your jeans? We had that constantly. Uh, but we had a core clientele, which was really behind sustainability early on, and what organic cotton actually meant to the industry. And so in 2006, we said we wanna be 100% organic uh, in our denim and cotton usage uh, by 2012, and we achieved that goal. But uh, we didn't stop there. We did a lot more, and we've continued to do a lot more. So this is just a couple of our highlights from 2018. So I could talk about how we're a leader in the Fairwear Foundation, uh, how we're a leader in the leaders category in the Fair in Fairwear Foundation, or how we're a leader in uh, cellulosics, or how we have a living wage incubator program, which is extremely important to the garment industry, if you're not familiar with that. But tonight I'm gonna focus on our uh, reuse, repair, recycle, repeat program. Uh, and how, how we go about our sustainable initiatives. First, I want to show you this really intense graphic. 
These are actually the goals set forth by the United Nations for sustainable development. You can see uh, all the points here. We operate in basically all these points, but where I'm going to focus is number 12. You can't read it, but it says sustainable production and consumption, use of natural resources, management of chemicals, and the reduction of waste. So what does that mean? Well, for nudie jeans, it all starts with a pair of dries. <laughs> by dries, I mean dry denim. It's what I'm wearing tonight. People not familiar with the denim industry, dry denim is the core, the quintessence of denim, period. When Levi Strauss made his first pair of jeans, they weren't stonewashed, they were dry. <laughs> uh, he wasn't trying to do a fashion thing, he was trying to do a functional thing, and that actually uh, is what drives our founders and what drives the company still. So I'm going to read this phrase right here so you get an idea of how passionate we are about dry denim. The touch, smell, and deep blue shade of raw, unwashed denim fabric is evidence of true craftsmanship, and it's there. In the dry denim and in the subsequent act of breaking in a pair of dry denim, that the heart of nudie jeans lies. And that's about our pants. So we are uh, intense about our pants. So you can see here what happens to a pair of dry jeans when it's worn. We tell our customers to at least wear your dry jeans for at least uh, six months. Any hardcore denim guy knows you should wear your jeans for like a year two years, for as long as your partner allows you to stay in the house. Wear them for as long as possible without uh, washing them, and you get better effects on your jeans. For example, here is one of our top-selling dry denims. This is uh, Grim Tim Dry Selvage, and this is him dry, meaning he hasn't touched uh, water. He's a clean pair, fresh jeans right off the uh, production line. This is after eight months of wear by a maniac. Uh, but look at all these abrasions. Uh, this is a worn eight months. That's hardcore eight months. But what you can see is all these, all these effects, which are normally produced artificially in the denim industry, usually with chemicals. This is what happens naturally if you just wear your jeans. Uh, you can see marks from his wallet, from calling his wife or calling his mom or her mom. You can see rips and stuff on the knees, this whiskering. All this stuff can happen naturally if you just wear your jeans. Uh, you can also see crotch rips, which have been repaired. We don't talk about those. Uh, but what happens to these jeans? Normally to a piece of clothing, if you wear it in, it breaks, people throw it away. That's sort of the age we live in now. But we have a saying, uh, we don't believe throw away in jeans are words that belong together. Really, throw away in clothes don't belong together. Um, but for us, how do we take responsibility for the products that we make? Uh, if we believe that jeans get better as you wear them, how do we extend that purpose through sustainability? And how we do it is through our repair shops. So. We open stores like other brands. We have direct-to-consumer brick-and-mortar shops. We don't call them stores. We call them repair stores because every pair of our jeans comes with 100% or a lifetime guarantee uh, of free repairs. So you could buy a pair of nudie jeans anywhere. You can buy them in Montreal. You can buy them in Vancouver. You can buy them in Jakarta. And you rip your jeans, but you're in New York. You can take them to a repair shop in New York. You can take them to a repair shop in Berlin. You could take them to Melbourne and we'll repair them for you for free forever for as long as you want to repair them for, or as long as we can repair them. Um, what that allows us to do is extend the life of the garment, obviously, uh, but it also engages the customer in a kind of loyalty which we've seen increase our business. I'm going to connect this to business a little bit as we go along, too. Um, here's some pictures of our repair shops. Uh, I think this is Berlin and New York, Amsterdam, I think. Berlin's definitely that uh, bathroom stall looking picture. You know, I've been into Berlin, pretty crazy. So what happens when we take this initiative? Uh, well, we save water in the consumer phase by advising our customers to wash less. So don't wash your jeans as much, they look better. We prolong the life of the garment through free repairs. Everyone knows, or you should know if you're in a sustainability conference, it's the high consumption patterns, which is a problem. <laughs> so as long as we can extend the life of the garment, the less consumption you have to do, hence less problems, less product. Uh, we reuse the fabric when the customers don't want the jeans any longer, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And we sell secondhand, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Here's some data. We repaired 55,000 pairs of jeans in 2018. Uh, we train all of our employees in our shops to utilize a darning machine. So there's darning machines in all our shops, two darning machines. They learn how to use the machine. It's fairly simple to use. And they learn how to repair those jeans. 
I should also mention that we have a trade-in program in our repair shops, meaning that you could take a pair of jeans that you're done with. Say it can't be repaired anymore, or you're tired of them, or they don't look good anymore, or they're too big for you, too small for you. You can trade them in, get 20% off a new pair of jeans. With that pair of jeans, we can use them to repair other jeans. So we cut them up into patchwork, for instance, to repair another customer's pair of jeans. We collected 10,500 pairs in our trade-in program in our repair shops. Uh, and we estimate we save something like 44,000 kilos of clothing from being thrown away. That's based on an average of how often people throw the clothes away. And 386,000 tons of water usage, uh, which is a lot of water. Um, but really what this comes to is what our spearhead and sustainable, or what I consider the spearhead of, a sustainable, of our sustainable business model ends up being, which is reuse. So sometimes when you break in a beautiful pair of jeans, uh, and you trade them in at our nudie jeans repair store, we don't want to cut them up. <laughs> we don't want to recycle them. They're beautiful already. So let's, let's thrift them in a transcendental way. Let's tell the entire story of denim from start to finish in a circular pattern. And that's where Reuse was born. It was born quite organically from an idea in a kid in a shop who was like, this jean is too beautiful to recycle. Can we fix it and resell it as thrift? And so we did, and we systemized that process. Uh, it's pre-loved denim, as I mentioned. It's cleaned and repaired. Yes, we do clean them, just for, uh, you know. I guess because it's people don't want dirty jeans. And uh, reusing saves water, obviously, uh, because we don't have to produce a whole new pair of jeans. We don't have to grow the cotton to do that. The jeans exist. And it reduces textile waste because we didn't, uh, we're not throwing the jeans away, and we don't have to, there's no uh, production waste at all. We already made the jeans. Uh, we had success pretty good organic success inside of our own repair shops. But we said, if we're really going to take this to the next level, let's take confidence and launch it online. So we did. We actually took pictures of every single gene, which is uh, if you're an if you're you're e-commerce retailer, you know that is a pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> I know there's some Essence guys here. That's a pain in the ass. But we did it anyway, and we sold 3,000 pairs. Uh, we did that in 2018. That was a big increase from 2017. We were slightly less confident then, but uh, we are much more confident now. We sold out both times in less than 30 hours, I think, globally. Uh, so we also took another initiative. This is something we did in North America. You guys are familiar with ComplexCon. Um, it's a sneaker-driven, direct-to-consumer trade show. It's uh, kind of a major deal right now in, in the States. I'm assuming you guys probably know what it is. But we set up a little booth, and we thought, how could we talk to a market, like a hype market, which isn't necessarily in the sustainability zeitgeist, and how can we appeal to that market? Uh, so what we did is we took a booth as an experiment. We had this big sustainability message about our denim, and we took some dry jeans you see on the left side, and we took some of our uh, reused jeans on the right side. Now, these were special reused. These were reused that uh, had a lot of rips and a lot of repairs. Uh, we went to Stockholm. I found some. I sourced some out of Australia. And we brought them back. And what happened was crazy, because these kids who didn't necessarily care about sustainability bought into it. I'm sorry. That was my fault. Sold out is what it says. OK? It's so heavy, it fell off the screen. Sold out. Sold out in uh, six and a half hours. It was 156 pairs or something. It was overwhelming, the response. Uh, let me, hopefully I didn't mess this one up. So here's some examples of the jeans I brought. These are jeans that somebody just traded in. They were finished with them, and they're beautiful. We didn't have to use any chemicals on these. We didn't have to throw acid on them. No one got tuberculosis making them. Here's another pair. And these jeans are literally, I call them transcendental thrift. That's what we call them. That's what I call them. There's a beautiful jacket that was broken in. I just keep going. There's a lot of pairs. Yeah. But sometimes those jeans aren't so pretty, so we have to tear them up and do something with them. As I mentioned, sometimes we cut them up and we patch other jeans, but we've also done uh, other things to try to keep the circularity uh, tight, keep the circle tight. Uh, we did something in 2007, super early on, where we uh, gifted some jeans to a fashion school in Gothenburg, and they made some uh, Victorian-era clothing. It was kind of crazy. 2007, that was cool. Uh, we have our recycled jeans, obviously, but you can also break down, you can also break down jeans. Uh, you can break it down back into a fiber, 
It's very energy intensive, but you can do it. And the holy grail, of course, is to make a whole new pair of jeans out of broken down jeans. Uh, and we may have something coming out. I don't know. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. But uh, you also have uh, rag rugs. Rag rugs was a, was a good one for us because it was a way that we could utilize even mixed fabrics to create these rugs that could last, that were really durable, and they're made by these artisans. So this was all nudie jeans made of post-consumer nudie jeans that uh, couldn't be recycled in another way. We could actually make them into a rug. So uh, those are some of our initiatives. But it's not all sunshine and roses. You know, it's not all windmills and you know, green energy or whatever. Um, there's major challenges when it comes to recycling fabric. And here's some of them. Recycling cotton on a fiber scale is, is an energy intensive, like I mentioned. It takes a lot of just energy to break down a pair of jeans back into fiber. And when you do that, you can have quality issues because the cotton, the virgin cotton, is usually longer when it's natural. And when you break it down from a post-consumer space, it's much, much smaller. Uh, so you have, to add a lot of, uh, you have to add a lot of virgin cotton, unfortunately, right now to make it quality or mix it with something. Volume of materials, getting people to just take, take their stuff to a store. Like, Bring your stuff to a store. That actually is like a, a huge issue. People will throw their clothing away. People will take them to a Goodwill. Please don't take your clothes to a Goodwill right now. I mean, they're like, it's crazy that we're sending so many products just overseas. Um, separation of rigid and mixed materials. That means most of the jeans that are sold are mixed with some other material, not just cotton. So when you bring those in, and you want to put them all in one pot, you have to separate them properly so that you can recycle them properly. You can't just put them in one big pot and say, great. Uh, that includes separating organic cotton. We need to make sure we understand what recycled and also recycled organic is. Those are two separate categories. And then keeping responsibility for the recycled products. So a rag rug is not the end of the game. We have to take responsibility of said rag rug, right? We have to take responsibility of all recycled products. So all of those are challenges that uh, we face and other sustainable brands also face. And then there's future challenges. Uh, there's a lot of challenges, but you know, it's all good. We're trying. Continue to develop work with living wages. I didn't talk a lot about this, but this is a big thing for us. Uh, maybe we can talk more about it in the panel. We want to repair more jeans. We want people to bring in their jeans. We want people to understand to that you can wear your jeans, they get more beautiful with rips and repairs. Maybe they turn to your Saturday night jeans and you gotta get a new pair of dry jeans, you know? Sell more secondhand jeans. Yeah, we want to sell more secondhand jeans. From a business perspective, secondhand jeans are awesome. Uh, we want to continue to develop the chemical work and decrease the chemicals used in production. Denim is a really difficult category. We were pioneers really early on uh, in trying to push for uh, our suppliers to provide organic cotton. It, it almost wasn't available to, to, to uh, provide for our supply chain. But we also want to push for reducing all usage of chemicals in standard uh, production models, which is a whole other thing. So to sum this up, sort of, this is our business model in a nice little tight little frame. Um, you take some organic cotton. You take some recycled cotton, maybe. Uh, maybe you mix them, maybe you don't. You team up with uh, partners that share your values. That includes manufacturers, producers. You try to make the highest quality product you can in the fairest way you can. And then you sandwich that between social responsibility and transparency. <laughs> and then you break in, repair, reuse, recycle, and repeat. And you continue to do that over and over. And then some money comes in, hopefully. You pay your bills, hopefully. Everybody lives a nice life. And through that, I hope that Nudie Jeans shows that you can follow your sustainable heart and you can actually be profitable. That's a big thing for me on the business side. So it doesn't exist without profit. Uh, and we've shown kind of through organic sustainable practices that that's possible. So I want to thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs>